acts together. Okay, and Speak to Us is um, an organization by itself at first. Uh, we offer mental health service for students in the United States. And how are we offering it? it by chat, by email. So any Malaysian students who are having mental health difficulties will reach out to us. So because of our different functionality, we collaborate each other, with each other. So Speak to Us is a part of NAMSA. We are um, affiliates of NAMSA. So that's how the collaboration works. Okay. So um, I think I think everyone um already go into their respective breakout rooms. So I think we can start now. All right. Okay. All right. Um let me know if I have background noise. Um I'm living in a very heavy, a busy household. So there'll be random noises and then do alert me so that I can slow down the noises. All right. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> thank you. All right. Um, welcome. Good afternoon. Okay, session after lunch is usually the worst session because it's the session you are like heavily put inside your stomach and it's hard to inter interpret information. So there'll be part of this presentation where um, we will involve interaction between me and all the listeners here. So, all right. I'll just to check with each other you guys can see the slides right how about the audience you can see the slides right okay so we're moving slides all right okay so what to expect from this presentation this is going to be a knowledge sharing session um i'll be sharing the knowledge that i get from um, serving speak to us which is an online mental health uh, platform and there'll be discussion if suitable discussion here since we are a bit of a smaller group so there'll be room for discussion where we have case study where we can go through and actually talk about the situations if ever you ever interfere or ever experience the situation so that we can talk and discuss this um, issues and then the presentation will be delivered both in Bahasa Malaysia and English so presentations are mostly in English but when it comes to examples, uh, there are certain examples that's easier to be explained in Bahasa Malaysia because it's easier for us to relate as well. Okay. And about language, is there anybody here that have difficulty with Bahasa Malaysia? Just checking. Okay, we're good. You can drop in the chat box if you want me to be in fully English. If not, I'll be doing Dewi. Just going to give us time. No checkbox. All right, let's go to the next part. All right, are you down for an interactive session? Because I'm aware that this is after lunch. I wanted you guys to be comfortable, especially because this is going to be an hour session. If you want it to be an interactive section where I'll be asking questions and you can give feedback to me, put a thumbs up towards the screen if you're opening a video. If not, you can just use the reaction button at Zoom to put the thumbs up. Okay, I'm checking the audience. Thumbs up if you're up for interactive session. All right, I'm seeing numbers. And no, if you prefer to listen. It's totally fine because this is an open environment. I just wanted to know how the audience are feeling about sharing this information. All right, so thumbs up again because I'm checking the audience. And thumbs down if you prefer to listen. You can use the reaction button or the chat box. All right, so I, I, I saw a few of a thumbs up, no thumbs down. So let's go with the majority who responded. So let's go with interactive session. Okay, guidelines. Because it's an interactive session, if we are open to somebody to give an opinion, as an audience, we must respect the people who are giving opinions. And this is a free space, everyone can talk, we can discuss, and if there is an argument, um, let's settle with agree to disagree. All right. And this is a free will environment. Um, if you want to talk, by all means, you can just raise up your hand. I can give the floor to you. But if not, it's fine. I'm not going to call out names. Okay. All right. How to interact. So during the interact sections, I'll be asking questions. So how to interact. One, you can open your video and actually give a thumbs up, thumbs up or thumbs down, depending on the question that I ask. Or another one is two chat box. 
Okay. So it's through chat box where you can just send messages or comments and I can go through it. I have it, the chat open, so don't worry. And last but not least, thumbs up and thumbs down whenever I check in. So there'll be part where I'll be checking with you guys if this is understandable or if the example that I provide a bit vague, you wanted more details. Um, so just give a thumbs up and thumbs down throughout. And here's a sign down here. Let's just sign down here, the blue bot. Um, whenever that's on, I mean, it's an interactive session. I'll be asking questions. All right. Okay, before we begin, I, I just like to do this practice for everyone, which is to take deep breath and be present. So let's do this together. Um, if you are sitting or standing or listening while running, um, let's just pause and take a deep breath together. I'll count one, two, three, and then we will inhale. So one, two, three, inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale. Okay. All right, let's do this again. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, so this breathing exercise actually help us to be present at the moment. So now um, I, I might have your attention. So let's start with the topic right now. So the topic that we come out, uh, Namsa and speak to us, we were thinking about addressing the invisible murder. <laughs> Thank you, Yuhara. Okay, for addressing the individual murder. So how the public can help. When we were looking into this topic and we wanted to break it down, we realized that public is a very vague noun. Why are we say, are focusing on public when everything actually should to be starting from us? So the hashtag bermula dari kita, or hashtag it start with you. So what you do affect the public. So how your action can actually help when it comes to mental health for the community level as well as individual level. So I'll go through this one by one. All right. Okay. So interactive session. When I mention mental health, please share on the chat box what is the first word that comes into your mind. Let's get this chat box open. Happiness, safe, depression, freedom, security, depression, stable. Oh, this, this is good engagement, guys. Come on, keep it coming. What's the other words that come into your head? Oh, that's very good. Mental health equals to physical health, internal energy, spiritual, important. Ah, oh, that's one, a very good word. Well-being brain how to think well wow this is this is a good engagement guys to start with so all this word that you come up some on point some related to mental health illness so what is this two different between mental health and mental health illness okay so here's i have a table side by side mental health and physical health so mental health refers to feelings so you feel sad you feel grief and these feelings come from triggers Triggers usually comes from situation or news. And the relationship between feelings and triggers, if the triggers is big, so it will lead to bad mental health situation. Okay, so I put aside with physical health. So physical health over here is headache and bleed. So whenever you get headache or you bleed, it will cause by a situation. Headache can be stressed. Bleed can be from a paper cut. Okay, so big incidents leads to bad physical health situation. But the thing here, there's this one thing that how people react towards it that make a whole of a difference. So mental health. Let's start with physical health first. If you have a paper cut, your finger bleeds. What is the first thing that you do? You're aware of the bleed, you address it, you get a band-aid to actually cover the physical health problem. But if you feel sad, for example, you get a bad grade from an, an exam, you feel sad because of that bad grade, but there's no first aid coming in. You're not comforting yourself. You're not admitting the sadness. You're not crying because you think crying is actually a source of weakness. So there's no assist that coming through to actually complete the whole cycle. So in physical health, your bleed 
bleedings comes up, that's a band-aid. But in mental health, sad because of the grade, but nothing happens after that. So this is what the awareness should come in. They should be the last step of comforting in this cycle so that you can feel better. Okay, so mental health and mental health illness, there's two separate things. Mental health is your state of well-being in here, in your heart. Mental illness is what happened if your mental health is not being taken care of. So that comes to internal pain that no one sees. And mental health illness can lead to bigger things such as depression, anxiety, or sometimes after a big event that causes PTSD, post-traumatic syndrome, it can lead to bipolar or even split personalities. So it's a whole of a process that starts with not being aware of these feelings. Okay, let's start to dive in mental health. What, why, and how? The main questions. What is mental health? Okay. If we Google, kalau kita Google pun kan, people will say, oh, mental health is the state of mind. But we don't really understand what this incorporates of. So mental health is a state of well-being in which an individual can do these four things. One, realize of own capability. Two, cope with normal stress. Three, can work productively. Four, contribute. Okay, when I was writing this, my the first thing that comes into my head, macam, oh, demand ni mental health ni. But no, actually no. Realize your own ability as in, you know, I can wake up this morning and I can make my own breakfast. That is already checking. Can cope with normal stresses. Normal stresses can be, oh, noise outside. Um, your car broke down. Ataupun, um, you have a bad day in exam. So that's normal stresses in daily life. Um, people in a well state of being can tackle this very easily. They can just, oh, I feel sad. I'm okay. I get over it. So this is very easily in a good state of mind. And work productively here doesn't mean that you have to complete a very big task. It can be as easy as folding your laundry. If you can fold your laundry without taking a lot of time, without actually get distracted, means you're good in a state well-being. Contribute. Contribution can be as small as doing the dishes or give bread to a bird outside. So it doesn't have to be a big thing that contributes to a society. It can be as simple as something that you contribute to yourself. So everything, if, if it's you can do, means you're in a good state well-being. But if you lost one of it, meaning to say that your state well-being is under a situation where you have to address. Okay. Before I go in depth, let's go into why is it important. So the importance of mental health is when your heart and mind is in a good state, you can actually express and unleash your full potential. Because we human, each one of us, have a true potential that unyet unleashed, especially for us around ages of 2, 20, 20 each. This is the moment where we truly unleash and try our best to growth. But because of this mental health state, because of the surrounding, it forcing us to not explore and it forcing us to suppress our feelings. So if we're not taking care of these emotions, it will affect us in the future. So that's why taking care of your mental health is important. How? Okay, we heard a lot about orang kata, oh, mental health is important. You have to be aware of mental health. But nobody actually emphasized on how. Like, how, how do you do this, Ajam? People said, oh, buy a self-care set. But it does not help if you don't know how to do it. So the first step to understand your mental health is by being aware. Second, by addressing. And third, by self-checking. I'll go through this one by one with the steps so that you can apply on your daily life. Okay, in, in terms of this context, because we are focusing on how public can help. So I'll be telling you what, how, once one practice on self can actually impacting the community on a community level. So I will go through the self part and then the second part of this presentation will go to a community part where how your self mental health well-being is in a good state can actually impact the community. Okay, so let's address self well-being. There's three things that we're going to learn today. First, aware. Second, address. Third, self-check-in. Aware and address are two steps together. It usually comes together. 
self-check-in is another activity that you could do. Okay. Aware. How to be aware. Okay. Um, when we were thinking about this context, something came into our mind. In, as Malaysian, we are being raised in an environment where people say, eh, jangan nangis. Eh, forget about it. Don't think about these feelings that you're having. This is actually a sus pressure where you suppress the feeling. It cannot let go. It stays within you. So this is the problem that we're trying to solve. How to be aware? Pause. So let's say, um, let's say you woke up in the morning and then suddenly you feel like something is not right. Something is not right within you. So you pause because you're acknowledging something is not right. So you acknowledge what you're feeling by scanning your body. So you think from up, think of your brain. Like, okay, kepala ku pening ke? No. How about your eyes? Is it sore? No. So you go through your body to see and acknowledge any feelings that you feel. Sometimes most, ran- most common lah orang akan cakap, oh, my back is in pain. Maybe I tidur tak betul kot. But this acknowledgement is good because you're acknowledging what you are feeling. And sometimes people wake up, I feel sad. Was it because of the post that I saw last night? Was it because of the story that I saw last night? Or was it because of the text that I received from a friend? Okay, acknowledging process. Okay, and then observe for changes. Uh, for example, if this changes happens in the middle of the day, like you're walking, you're in class, and then suddenly something happened. And there's a sudden emotion change. So you're happy, pagi-pagi jalan-jalan, and then tiba-tiba something happened, you end up sad. So this sudden emotion changes, you need to be aware of. You need to um, tell yourself, oh, I had a sudden emotion change. You need to aware. Okay, now that you're aware, what to happen next? Address. Address here, it's almost similar to validate. Bila you address, you acknowledge that feelings, you validate. Oh, uh, let's go back to the example where you're walking towards your nak pergi kelas. So you jalan, nak pergi kelas, and then suddenly a cat runs in front of you and you almost slipped. So this emotion change you like, oh, mo, I, I hampir terjatuh. So you were happy just now, but that, but that situation causing you to, oh, I almost slipped. So you feel a bit of sad. Okay. This is not a big issue, but it will be a big issue if you keep it suppressed. So you address it, oh, I was a bit sad, nasib baik tak jatuh. So by addressing this feeling, it helps you to actually find the cause. So the cause was, I was not walking very well, uh, but it's okay. Uh, so you're addressing it, acknowledging it. And let's just take another example on how, when to take action. So here I'm going to bring a most um, relatable when it comes to relationship. Uh, for example, uh, you receive a breakup message from your boyfriend or girlfriend. Okay, so the first step you do is, oh my God, this message that I just received, it's very sad. So you address the feeling. I'm sad, I'm mad, I'm frustrated. Why is this guy sending this message or why is this woman sending this message all of a sudden? So all this feeling, address it. Find the cause, find the trigger. Why are you mad? And usually don't relate to people, relates to the situation. So the situation is because he's breaking up with me. And take action. Action here is you can avoid the trigger, you avoid. Meaning to say, if you don't ready to converse in that conversation, then just leave it. Come back to it later. Or do some self-care. Um, after you attend the message, it's a, I just want to listen to music or I want to go drive away, ke, apa ke. just do some self-care for yourself for you to take actions and addressing that feelings. Or another step, the most common that we usually use is talk to someone. So after a breakup, we usually go and talk to your best friend, oh my God, he just broke up with me or she just broke up with me because of this. This is common for women because we know how to handle our emotions because emotions are very strong within women. But for men, they usually suppress. So that's why um, talking to someone is helpful. Self-care is helpful. As well as avoiding the trigger is helpful. This um, uh, sharing session, because I wanted to everyone to know that it's equally important for men and women to feel that validating your emotion is actually a good practice. Yeah, exactly. Break, breaking up is the worst. All right. So... Self-checking, now that you address, you validate, and as well as you take action towards that feeling, it's easier for you to actually get it through. If any of one here knows about Mitch album or a book, it says Tuesday with Maurice. So Maurice said this one um, word that um, until now, which has stuck in my head, all, 
dia cakap let emotion goes through you at first i wonder what does it mean macam ignore je ke like let it pass through you no it means that when you accept you address you validate it's easier for you to yes emotion through you it's easier for you to get through it macam okay i dah i understand this emotion i did my self care and i feel better now so that's what it means by letting the emotions through you Okay, so now I'm sharing with you uh, an activity that you could do, which is a self check in. So after a trigger, after after a trigger or after a situation, ask yourself what is this feelings, and then some people write it down, some just list it down in their head, and some just lie down and then and then acknowledging each one of the feelings, and it's a good practice to actually find time in the day. To go through what you feel about your day, so for example, in a time you feel um mostly people do uh, before you do, so before you do, you rest your mind and say, oh, what do I feel today? Uh, was was I sad? If I'm sad, because of why? So this process is very helpful for you to get the emotions through you and make you feel better the next day. Okay, and last but not least, yes, emotion could be too much, and sometimes these emotions. It's too powerful that it consumes you. It's hard for you to validate. It's hard for you to address, and it's hard for you to take actions with it because it's too much. Get help. Talk to someone. Um, talk to anyone that close to you, your friends, your siblings, your parents, or anyone that close to you. Find a person that you trust to actually share this problem. And if it gets overwhelmed, then any of the reach out is not helpful. You can actually get help from the specialist. But don't worry, I get into that and how to get. All right, so this is intuitive session. I explain how to be aware, how to address, how to validate. But let's just do a simple practice here. Okay, so here I have a common. I have a common situation which I'm. I feel stressed of coursework, and it's hard to complete tests. This is. Every student would have, would actually feel this. Okay, but only a few that validate. So let's do this practice. First step is, I want each one of you or anyone that feels like want to contribute feelings from here. When you read this sentence, what kind of feeling that you faham from this sentence? Please put in the chat box. What kind of feeling that you get from this sentence? Can it be stress? Can it be sad? Any types of feeling? Insecurity, frustrated, right? Good. What else? Overwhelmed, nice. Temporary sad. That's a good word, actually. Temporary, and I explain why. Anxious. Good, 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 guys. Keep it coming. This is this is very good because if this practice, once you get through it, it's easier for you to understand your own emotions, struggles, stress, anxiety. Thank you, thank you, Shufeng. Okay, so. The next step is <laughs> makan tak kenyang mandi tak basah. That's, that's good too. That's a good feeling to be addressed. So, okay. Now the statement to address. Now that you understand the feelings that comes from this statement on the right, on the left side, try to make it in a dialogue. Okay. What would you say to yourself to address these feelings? What would you say to yourself to address the situations on the left side? Example. So for me, I would say I stress lah. So but cause work me, and it's too much. I'll say it to myself. Mm -mm. Let's just address this situation. So what would you say to yourself to address this stress and hard complete task? This is give a moment. I can't handle. That's good. That's good way to start. It will go to that's 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 positive. That's just very positive tones. You have a, it leads to a good step. Oh, this is this is a good example. You can do this, Fatin. Let's plan for it. What do you have? When are you going to do it? You don't feel like it. It's okay. Do it when you feel like it. True. This is also a good example because it's an awareness. It's an validation. It's also a tax an action, 
good. Sending love to each other. All right. Do what you like. Yeah. Okay. So this is an example how um this is an example of how the exercise would work. So you say to yourself, I'm very stressed of my coursework and it is getting out of hands. It's good that you address the situation and then you will come up with the action. Macam what Fatu did. Fatu said, um, I'm stressed, this is getting out of the mind, but I'm taking steps. Okay, what to do first and how to tackle this. So this thought process helps for a good well state. Good state of well-being. Okay. All right, now let's go and when to get help. So tadi I mentioned um, sometimes feelings are too much. Sometimes emotions are too much to process. And we as human, there are certain emotions that we can interpret. It's like beyond our mind. Sometimes it's a mixture of a lot of things. And so people can say you're sad and then you're like, I'm not sad. And people can say you're frustrated and then you say, this is not frustrated. So even you yourself having this difficulty to understand these feelings. But feelings... The main caveat here, feelings is just a guess. It comes and it goes. What you have to do is address, acknowledge, and let it through you. That's what you have to do with feelings. If you let it be, if you suppress or ignore it, this is a defense mechanism as a human we would do. But in the long term, if you accumulate all these feelings, it could try start to consume you. So if it starts to consume you, you need to get help. So, um, but people much um, always undermine lah. Like, is this too much? Tanta idea yang tak tahan, or I juga yang tak handle this emotion. But actually, if it goes beyond weeks, it's time for you to get help. It's time for you to talk to people, and it's time for you to address that this is too much of emotions, and you need to get bandaged for it. Okay, this is not a problem. This is just a sickness, and it has cure. Okay, let's start. Get help. Okay, so just wanted to let you guys know that Speak to Us is open for Malaysian as well, in Malaysia juga. So it's not specifically in United States. You guys can check if you feel like wanted to talk to us. We available to email online chat as well. Confession jar. Since Speak to Us online is run by students, we have schedule for it, so it's not usually available. So another options that you have is befriend us. It's 24 hours. You can call them or email them. And here, I include juga lah kerajaan because it's good. They provide good, good information. <laughs> sorry guys, sorry for the, the frustration that I shown. Okay, so um, our government provide us 15999 Talian Kasih. This call can actually um, connect you with professional. I have my sister over here. Okay. Connect you with professionals and professional as in professional psychotherapist or counselor. Um, hi, sorry, this is my sister. If you wanted to say hi, all right. <laughs> okay. Now we're done with get help. Um, just remind you if you guys want to get help from counselor or anything, just call one five nine nine nine. That's a good call, and it's actually a good service that go through. Okay. Now let's go into community level. What can you do for community level? What kind of exercise that can you do yourself and affect the community? There's three things. First is empathy, awareness, and mindfulness. Too much of this, but yeah, it is what it is. Empathy. Empathy. Uh, this is a new word. I, can, I always see it on Twitter, Ivan Azlan, all the psychologists have been sh sharing about empathy. So what is this empathy thing? Um, and how is it different from sympathy? And why are people talking about it? Because empathy is a way how you as a person can help a friend, how you as a person can help a siblings, or how you as a person can actually help people around you. Empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and share feelings of another. So how do you understand and share feelings of another? That is through sharing stories. So when people say, oh, you can practice empathy, you're not showing me empathize, you're not empathizing my stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, how to get tackle this problem is by asking more questions, 
and getting more information from this person who is talking to you. So let's introduce Sarah and Arjuna into, into this story. So I have Sarah. Sarah is a girl um, that has no family conflict. She's, she's good. She has other stresses. It's just she's, she doesn't have family conflicts. But Arjuna on the other side have family conflicts. So Arjuna is trying to tell Sarah the problem that Arjuna has. But Sarah on the other side, it's hard for Sarah to understand that um, this family conflict because she herself never experienced this situation. So how Sarah practice empathy towards Arjuna? So a method to do this is for Sarah to ask questions from Arjuna when Arjuna is telling and get as much as information to view this problem based on Arjuna's perspective. Okay. So as Sarah, they can dengar all the story from Arjuna and they can say, oh, this is what Arjuna is feeling. This is the situation that Arjuna is facing. And me, I'm understanding this situation that Arjuna is facing. So that's how empathy works. You understand the whole stories and you can actually, the ability to understand the emotion within the situation. So this requires a lot of practice. It's not a one thing to, me myself struggles with empathy um, because it needs more information. And sometimes empathy can only be reached when you are truly close with that person. So close friends or someone very dear to you, then it's easier to practice empathy. Tapi kalau new people, new yang baru jumpa, it's very hard because you don't get a lot of information to actually connect it. So don't, don't worry if you cannot empathize. You just keep asking questions until you understand the whole story. Okay, so empathy versus sympathy. What's the difference? We have exercise here. Okay, so we have A and B. Which one of the following do you feel the one that expressing empathy? Please share the chat box. Yes. B. Good. Yeah, she wanted to join us too. She said B. <laughs> okay. All right. We're on, on the good page. Thank you, guys. Good interaction. Okay. Thank you for slowing down. I'm just saying that to my sister. Okay. I'm sorry you feel that way. And I'm sorry you're experiencing that way. This is a statement that I sold it someone. And it does not provide a sense of support. Okay, but saying this doesn't mean that you're a bad couple. Girl. It doesn't say that you're, oh, you're not a helpful couple. Girl. But this is a learning process. When you say this, this, this is portraying you know, like this person is the only one expressing this. So when you say this to a person, for example, if Sarah saying this to Arjuna, Arjuna can like, say, oh, this situation that I'm having is very bad and they can start feeling more sad about it. So how Sarana actually help Arjuna from it? It's by using the option B. I'm sorry to hear that. It must be awful to you. This is a validation of that feeling. And I want you to know that you are not alone in this. This is where Sarah is giving support by saying that you are not alone in this. And this sentence gives the other person a sense of companionship that they are not the only one and there is hope. Okay. So here's an highlight version. Being awful means you validate the feelings. Green is support. Okay, let's be real. This sounds like a formal textbook words. How are you going to incorporate this in a daily conversation? So I'm going to give you um, just a verbal example of Arjuna and Sarah. Let's say Arjuna says to Sarah, Oh, pagi tadi my parents got to. I heard their conversation from my room. It's very depressing. It's very frustrating. So, but I hear everything and it's making me to feel sad. So, how Sarah not faham the situation? So, Sarah punya respon macam, oh my God, that must be frustrating to you. How about you tell me more about this feelings that you're having? And maybe Sarah could say, okay, tell me more. What, what happened after that? And where are you now? All this information, young Sarah, question yang Sarah tengah tanya, will make Arjuna to tell more. So when Arjuna tells more information, it's easier for Sarah to practice empathy. So that's how it works. And you don't have to keep, be rigid and copy this word. Just be, just be as casual as, as you could. So Fatin gave a good question here. 
Oh. But what if Arjuna doesn't want to tell more? So perhaps this holding space for her. Okay. So this problem is very common. Macam sometimes people just give you one information and then just leave. Okay. But one thing you have to know that Arjuna trusts Sarah to actually tell the stories, but he's just not ready to tell more. So as a, as a Sarah, Sarah can say to Arjuna, um, it's okay if you don't ready to tell me or it's okay if you're not sharing. But please know that I'm here whenever you need me. Okay. And then there's another question over here. How to know whether she wants us to leave her alone or she wants us to stay and be there? Okay. Um, this might sound very harsh, but you have to ask. When it comes to mental health situation, you need to ask the friend. Like, um, okay, I want to help you. Let me know. Do you want me to be here or do you want a time alone? So ask the person. And through messages, if you reply messages, this message might not sound empathetic. So do add emojis, do add this eye crying emoji so that the person understands that you are actually giving that person a room. Okay. Oh, this is a very good question coming out here. So I need to burst in the chat session. Okay, how do we keep on asking questions to show empathy without looking like someone who is busybody? Okay, so one thing, if a person telling you a story, um, asking questions too much can look like a busybody. But Amalina highlight a good reason. But a way to control this is to ask one question at one time. So one open-ended at one time. If that person continue telling with a lot of information, then that person is ready to talk. Happy if that person giving a one or two then it's time for you to ask if you want me to leave you alone or if you want me to stay, um, how can I help you? So those kind of information help. This conversation is a bit hard to do, but once you get it's easier to practice, it's easier to um, get it go through and then say it in person. What if that person doesn't reply? Okay, if that person doesn't reply, it's fine. Just reply some as simple words that we usually do. It's whenever you need me, I'm here. Leave it there. You're done. You're okay. You're fine. So don't worry about that person. If that person doesn't reply in two days and you're worried, you can check on them. Don't worry. What if she say, I don't know? I don't know is that person, they tak tahu macam nak process that information. So what you can do, you use the practice aware address study. You tanya dia. So what are you feeling right now? Uh, what happened? Um, is there anything that you feel in your body? Tanya soalan-soalan macam tu. And again, it goes back to busy body. If you ask one question at one time, if that person don't feel like replying, ask that person if you want to be alone. And make sure to reassure, last before you leave, if you need me, I'm here. So always close your ending with reassurance. If you need me, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> My sister wanted ice cream. Okay, practice, another practice. Let's do this together. I've been feeling very down lately. A close friend of mine recently passed away and it feels like there's a void in my heart now. I don't know what to do. Okay, so let's break this down. First, that person is saying that I feel down. Maksudnya, they're sharing the emotion. I just give me a moment. I need to let my sister know. All right, she's good. All right, this practice. I've been feeling very down lately. A close friend of mine recently passed away to COVID-19 and it feels like there is a void in my heart. Okay, let's break this part. The first part, I have been feeling very down lately. This is feelings. This is the person telling you feelings. A close friend of mine recently passed away to COVID. This is the situation that relates to the feeling. And then I don't know what to do. The first step that you could do is... Validate by saying it must be awful for you. Acknowledge the feeling yang dia bagitahu tadi, which is frustrated, which is very down. Relate if you could. I lost a person too. I want you to know that you're not alone. Ataupun perhaps you can say, I feel your grief. I'm here for you. And again, follow up questions. But another way to do this, because that person say, I don't know what to do, you can ask. Do you want me to help you? What kind of help do you want from me? That might sound harsh. Another way that you can say, um, 
I don't know what to do. Do you want me to help? Um, kalau dalam bahasa Melayu macam, um, okay, I don't know what to do. Okay, is there anything I could do in Malay? Cuba bagi tahu aku if anything aku boleh bantu kau. I'm here to help. Um, whenever you need me, aku kat sini. And you can just give action words that you can provide to them. But be prepared whenever you offer support. Make sure it's something that you can provide. If it's not, then don't put yourself in that position. Okay? Let's go in chat session. How do we relate without making the other person? This isn't about you, it's about me. Okay. So, um, Amalina asked a good question about relate. Okay. Can you not relate to the person that this isn't about you, it's about me? Avoid saying the words, um, avoid explaining a lot. Contohlah kan? Let's just give an example. Um, a person check up, I'm a positive COVID patient. I'm worried about myself. I takut if this is going to be more than tahap 2 or tahap 3. And you also, a person yang pernah experience COVID. So how do you relate without changing the spotlight? Okay, the way to do this is saying that, oh, um, I have COVID too. So let, that's the first sentence. The second sentence, I may not know, I may not understand the anxiety that you feel right now, but let's talk about this more. Put the limelight to them back. And the, and the sentence by asking them for more information. And avoid share stories about you. Jangan yang macam, ni yang macam, oh, I pun COVID juga. Hari tu, um, I tahap dua je. Oh, after 10 days, you'll be fine. Don't. That's too much information. Let's just stop at, I experienced COVID as well. I understand what you're facing. Now let's tell me where this coming from or why are you feeling this way? So relate just in a small part and go back to them. Don't take the limelight. Is that clear? Okay, how to avoid saying, I still feel without making other feel offended. It may not sound natural as an individual, but okay. How to avoid saying, understand how you're feeling without making the other same because mental health is not expensive. Okay. Understand is a very rigid word. How to use it? It's very, um, how to say, uh, they're much um, tricky tau. So I understand your feeling, but nobody can actually understand anybody's feeling. For example, um, Sarah cannot say, to Arjuna, I understand your feeling just from empathy. Cannot. Sebab Arjuna has been living with that situation for many years now. And when Arjuna is sharing the stories, and Sarah said, I understand, Arjuna as an individual akan rasa macam, no, you cannot understand. I've been living this for 20 years now. So it's, it's different. So how to say that? Understand without having that person rasa macam tu is, I understand, highlight the feelings the frustrations that you're having. I may not living in that situation, but I can feel this frustration that you portray in promotion too. That's how you use the word understand. You highlight on the feeling. Contola, if that person says, oh, I said, day my boyfriend just left me. I understand the sadness that you're feeling. I may not understand the situation, but understand the sadness, the feeling. Yang tu je boleh. The whole situation, we are not capable of. Okay? All right. So let's move on. All right. So for empathy practice, the first response matters the most. When the person comes to you, your first response matters the most. After that, dia macam dah ringan sikit dah. Because you dah tahu the person is want to tell you ke tak, the person want to talk to you ke tak. It's, it's easier after that. But the first stage is usually the hardest, which is the first response. Macam the first response is selalunya the one that you have to be careful with. So the first response is the one where you validate the feelings and then always end with a reassurance. Like, oh, um, this is what you're facing. Um, I'm here to help or tell me more, share with me those kind of reassurance. Okay, so what happened next? The first, you have to reassurance semua tu. That person says, oh, I don't feel like telling ke apa ke. Then ask question. But I said, Ask one at one time. Don't ask a lot at one at one time. So ask one by one. If that person stops sharing, send again a reassurance. So that's how the process goes. Okay, so we have one question. 
Is it okay to be a listening ear, supporting emotions, even though it be difficult to understand? It's be totally fine. And and if it's someone yang you feel comfortable to, macam if it's your best friend, you can actually say it. Macam, um, let's put Arjuna and Sarah back. So Sarah said to Arjuna, I am very sad. I'm sad because of what the situation you're facing. I know this is very frustrating for you. Tell that person because Sarah and Juna is very close to each other. So Sarah by tell Juna. But I'm not capable to, to understand all this. But I'm here. I'm here to listen. I'm here to support you. Let me know if you need anything. So here, Sarah bagi tahu yang I'm not capable to fully understand. But I'm here. I'm here for you. So like I said, opening, reassurance at the ending. So if you have any information you wanted to share with that person, just make sure you have the reassurance at the ending. So that person will feel better. Okay, how I know how you feel. Be better to say it sounds like you said yes. Shufan gave a good example because if you say start with I know how you feel, sometimes it may not be suitable with the person you talk to. You can start with it sounds like you are sad with the feelings because sometimes they might be confused and they over mean feelings too. Exactly on point because feelings sometimes can be a mixture of feelings. Uh, if you put that one feelings, it might be incorrect. So you can. Uh, point out the um, actions that they give. Macha, it sounds like you are sad. This is a very good example. Thank you, Shufe. Okay. Let's go back to this slide. Things to avoid. Okay. This we have mentioned just now because a lot of... Thank you guys for giving information to give um, feedback as well as asking questions. So this one kita dah cover just now. Avoid fixing their problem. Unless if they ask for it. Contoh, uh, they come to you and say, oh, my car broke down. And then you might say, oh, your car broke down. So um, you ask, do you need help from me? Do you want me to call this? Or do you want me to do this? Ask. But remember to ask one question at one time or else you sound busy, buddy. So ask one, one question at one time. Do you need help from me? Do you want me to call for you? And avoid talking about own problems. Again, the limelight. So if you want to relate, just give a statement on how you can relate and then push the limelight back to them by asking questions related to them or ask them to share more about their part. Okay. Now let's go into the community part. Actions towards community. All right. Awareness. Tadi, kita dah faham pasal empathy on how as an individual, we can empathize with other people. But now it's in community help where we spread awareness. Awareness here, okay. And we're not talking about, oh, telling other people, oh, guys, this is mental health. You need to be aware about this. No, this is awareness as you as a person. How do you aware about surrounding? How do you aware about people in this room? How are you aware with your friends? Social media has made it easy where you can actually be aware of other people's mental health, well-being by looking at their stories. That's from Choti Media. Or if it's someone close to you, like your friends, girl, your siblings, or someone you meet in daily life, you can look for physical changes. Or um, last but not least, SOS. SOS here stand for alarming notes. Contohnya, yes. unfortunately, COVID has made it common for people to say, like, I'm tired of this and I'm, I don't feel like leaving anymore. So this is an alarming word. Like, I'm tired. Uh, it's better for me to just go on. It's better for me to just vanish. I don't want to be here anymore. So this is an alarming sentence that you have to be aware of. Okay, so this awareness as a person, when you're aware of other people, it's easier for you to actually offer help to that person. Because this awareness, you study empathy when that person comes to you. But what if you notice that person needs help? Then how do you get to that person to actually help? Through awareness. Okay, so what to do about it? Now, you nampak story. You nampak people uh, giving alarming notes on Twitter. Ataupun you saw your siblings saying things like that. Macam, you know what? I'm done with this life. Ataupun um, sitting at the corner of the room, not talking while this person is actually an introvert, an extrovert, sorry. So all this behavior changes, all this alarming, you wanted to do something about it because you are aware of their well-being. So what to do? You ask. So the first step that you could do is you highlight the behavior. But how would you say it? Say in a kind word saying that, I notice you being portraying this. I notice you are being sad. I notice the story about you. 
do you want to talk about it? Ataupun um, just reply to the story. Hey, this is um, um, some people. So I want to give a very simple simple example. Macam story kan, you nampak? And they reply, hey, do you want to talk about it? That's very simple. Hey, do you want to talk about it? Ataupun, hey, um, I saw the story. Uh, what happened? Simple. But this awareness of asking people can actually put this person to a stage where they rasa macam, oh, I, I need to talk about this. So when one person take a step to reach out to this person, this person who is in a bad state of well-being can actually get help. So slow action, simple too. As simple as, hey, do you want to talk about it? Can actually help a person's life. So you could practice empathy with that person once you start sharing. And last but not least, if it's a very critical condition, here critical condition meaning to say that he's not talking to you, um, she's not talking to you, he or she or they um, ignore you, and you feel that they are giving a lot, lots of cues, suicidal notes as well, it's time for you to get help and offer help. How to offer help? Just give them a link. I think um, this is alarming. Please get help. Hantar link at the rung. Okay. But there's a caveat here. What if this person doesn't close to you? Macam mana kalau dia tak rapat pun dengan you, but you are aware of the situation. What to do? Macam, um, I have a friends. Dia macam, oh, I'm aware of this. I'm a person that I'm aware of this. All cues that giving by this person to me. But I don't know what to do. Because I'm not close to them. Asking, hey, do you want to tell me more is awkward. Because we haven't been talking for 10 years. So why now? So benda-benda macam tu. How to actually help. So but a way that you can do is you can share stories on Instagram. Um, ataupun this is like how awareness is created. You can share stories on Instagram. Ataupun um, if you know that person knows someone that close, they can actually highlight their behavior. Talk to that person. Macam, eh, um, for example, let's add Adam to the story of Adam or Arjuna and Sarah. So Adam is a guy that wanted to help Arjuna. Tapi Adam always not in the right time. And how Adam interact with Arjuna, Arjuna tak selesa. There's no trust within Arjuna and Adam. But Adam is aware of Arjuna punya step we being. So what Adam can do? Adam can talk to Sarah. Sarah, I saw Arjuna, I saw Arjuna is in this state. Um, do you want to talk to him about it? So you reach out. Okay, so that's how it works as a community. All right, so... We have one question here. I counter a situation where my friend told me that his friend keep bugging him with repetitive question and situation. Eventually, he is tired of giving the same advice to a friend. In this kind of situation, what's the best thing to do? Okay. For me to advise, I kind of need more information. So I want to counter. Okay, what kind of questions that the person is being keep bugging and how the situation is? Um, what kind of advice if he, the guy here, is trying to give it to that person? Okay, you as a person, what you can do is you evaluate the situations and see if his action is good, if his attention is good. Try to look into his attention. If it's bad, then maybe you could advise to your friend, oh, it's okay, you can just tell him to stop bugging you. If it's creating a toxic environment, um, if this is online, Block is an option, but I'm, I'm not giving a solution to you. The solution to you is actually to access the situation first. Understand what's happening between these three people that you're telling me. And make sure to fully understand the situation before you make decision. So I, I'm sorry that this answer may not give you a direct what to do, but it's best for you to fully understand the situation first before you pinpoint on the next step. Okay. Let's move on. Awareness. Mindfulness. So this is the last part of community help. Mindfulness. Mindfulness is the ability to be fully present, aware where we are, what we're doing, and stop from being overreactive and overwhelming. Okay, for this part, let's relate back to the activity size, uh, activity exercise. Ah, that's a repetition. To that breathing exercise we had just now. When you breathe in and breathe out, you pause your activity, you focus on your breathing, and now you are fully present. This is a step towards mindfulness. To be mindful of your present. To be aware 
yang I sedang breathing right now. And when you aware at that one particular moment, it's easier for you to interpret and understand feelings. Okay, don't worry. I go to I go through in this one by one. And how I'm going to share how mindfulness as one person is practicing can leads to a safe environment and better community, also a free judgment place. Okay, so very vague right now, but let's go with that. Okay, so here. One person practice mindfulness. Okay, they relax, they in the present, they don't overthink, and they address the situation as it is. Let's put a car accident in here. So car accident happens. The driver yang melanggar tu, first thing that happens gonna be macam oh my god, I langgar orang. Oh my god, the car is dented. You shouldn't much mana. Okay, pause and be mindful. Address the situation as it is. Take a deep breath. Okay, let's just go out and see how the dented. Is. How about the person in front? Okay, kita. It helps to address the situation as it is, and it's avoid you from making decision yang will leads to worse consequences. So mindfulness play an important role. Even it's practiced by a person, it can actually help the situations that the person is actually handling in. So. Yang langgar tu mindful. Orang yang depan tu tak. So what happened? Orang keluar dari depan cakap, oh kenapa kau langgar kereta aku? So are you not watching like benda-benda macam tu and start condemning this person who is trying to be mindful? Okay, in this scenario, when the person is being mindful, it will encourage that person to be more aware of social surrounding. So dia akan faham ya, oh orang depan ni marah sebab aku langgar kereta dia. And this reaction terhadap I because of I langgar kereta dia. And this address yang tengah berlaku in your head, it's easier for you to control the conflict. And you become more sensitive to the context of this situation. Macam, okay, as this, you can try to comfort orang yang langgar, orang yang kat depan tu cakap, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, nak buat apa sekarang kita ambil gambar ke? So, the actions is there because the person who being mindful, dia senang nak control the situation. And that person yang nak tengah emotion tu, when the persons are not attacking back the emotions, there's no defend mechanism happening. So the conflict slowly resolved. So that's how it works It's in two person. I think I explain how it happens in the whole community. Okay, but before that, just a checking, because I've been talking for too long now, I said I could you guys get void. Okay. So which one is mindful? Which one is mindful? <laughs> Ryan, can okay. How to answer this is put on the chat. Whether it's a dog or a person, which one is practicing mindful? The one I referring to, the dog or the person? Doggy. Yes, good. <laughs> Don't go. <laughs> dog. Yes, you guys on point. Mindful, the person ni, he's not there. He's not in the park. He's not being present. Dia fikir pasal kereta, dia fikir pasal music, dia fikir pasal exams. There's a lot of things in his head. The dog is being present. So let's put a scenario in this picture. What happened if a car, if you drive in front? Which one are more aware of the car? The dog or the person? Let's go back to chat. The dog, yes. So, by practicing mindful, by being present, by being the dog in the picture, you can actually understand the situations that can happen within you, and the awareness is high. You're aware of the person, the cleaning you. You're aware of the trees. You're aware of the sun, and it could actually give you, it could actually gives you a comfort though, in a sense. Yeah, much like, oh. I'm enjoying this park session. I'm enjoying this moment. And this can actually give you a relieved feeling. Okay. How does it work in community level? Okay, dah. Kita dah done with exercise semua. Okay. Tadi kita ada orang accident. Okay. And then that orang tu, sebab seorang mindful, so dia sedang sikit nak avoid conflict. Okay. And how does it lead to a better environment? It leads to a better environment when more than a single person Practice mindfulness. So let's put the car accidents too. 
Kalau dua-dua orang practice mindfulness, macam be there, be present. And that person macam, okay, kereta dah langgar. Kalau nak marah pun, nak buat apa? So let's talk about insurance. Let's talk about um, hantar kepada polis. Let's talk about how to get this done so that we, each other can settle. So when two person practice mindfulness, it's easier for them to access the situation and it's better as a group to solve the problem. So mindfulness is not something easy. It's not something yang kita akan achieve within next two or three years. It needs a lot of work, but it starts with you. Okay, this is how to practice. Mindful breathing is one example. Choose one daily task to do mindfully. So um, as a Muslim, you, could do, you can test this while praying. So uh, when you pray, just focus on the task. Or other, you can start try to meditate. But another thing that you can do, simple lah, macam even folding your clothes, try to be present while doing the activity. Okay, and then other things that you can do, you can join mental health organization. Here's another, um, speak to our stuff. The logo up here. Yeah. Me. <laughs> so we are looking for student committee board. Uh, we are expanding. So if you guys are interested to be spreading this awareness, spreading this information that I'm sharing, and be a part of this, you can join us. You can apply um, at our Instagram. So our Twitter handle is very simple. It's just underscore speak to us underscore. And if you like the session, if you want to meet me or you want to ask questions, just like the end to speak to us. They'll be happy to actually answer your questions. Okay. Just a summary, to sum up. Um, the, this true session, this whole session is actually to share how one person action can help the individual in an individual state and how a person action can help in a community level. So individual, aware, address, self-check-in, you say hi, mental, you say hi, you know full capability, you can be the best version of yourself. And on a community level, you're supporting your friends and friends supporting you. If two person practicing it, becomes the community become better. So then again, um, and I highlight young, we're not living in an ideal world, but if one person take an action at one time, it is achievable. Okay, reach out. Um, just to highlight, if your pain is no longer under your control, your thoughts are taking your body, please, please, please reach out. Uh, no matter how small, no matter how you rasa macam benda tu kecil ke apa ke, reach out. If you don't have any friends or you don't have anyone you would trust, you can reach out to Befenders. You can reach out to speak to us. Um, it's 100% anonymous. You don't have to tell your name. You can just go there and ask for help. And also, Talian uh, Kasi that I shared just now. There's a lot of other mental health platforms you can try, but make sure you reach out because that's the first step to actually help ourselves. And then here's a checkout. Um, oh, there's a question here. Peaceful negotiation, but the peaceful negotiation. Is it only for students? Are we open? Um, it's a student committee board, so mainly the focus is for students. Uh, you can try uh, to apply and let's see how the management would see. Only student based in Malaysia and today? No, we open for any anyone as long as they're students. So the group here is students. If you're not students, you can try to apply and see how it works. Because uh, we wanted to keep it more flexible within students. Because understand if it, we involve young adults, then um, scheduling will be hard for them. So that's a, another thing. But if you're interested, just drop in. I think we'll discuss about it later. Check out. All right. So now I just want to check in with you guys. How is the information delivered? Was it clear? And I'm truly sorry about my sister that come trans around. Uh, we tried. It is hard to control a kid, especially a two-year-old. So uh, let me know if the information is clear. If not, thumbs down. We have a Q&A session after this. Okay, thank you. All right. Q&A. So this is a moment. I uh, just open the floor before we end the session. Um, any other questions? Related or not related? As long as it's within mental health, I'm, I'm, I can try my best to answer. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, feel free to unmute and drop your question in the chat box. Oh, we have one person raise your hand. Yes, you can unmute. Hi, Shaza. Um, it was a very good presentation. Uh, I'm not sure if it's relatable, but um, not being gender biased, is it easy to approach women or men if you want to reach out? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a good question to ask. Um, 
and it's individually dependent. Macam, let's put it in this case. Um, again, I'm using Arjuna and Sarah. So Arjuna is a guy. Arjuna is having this problem. Arjuna reach out to Sarah because for Arjuna, it's easier to reach out to girls. So it's very individual preference. Macam for me as a person, um, I prefer guys because I wanted solution. I, I'm kind of person yang macam, I feel this feelings and I want to solve it right away. So I talk to guys because guys, their way of thinking is a bit straightforward. Macam girls, we have like, <laughs> unfort- it's not unfortunate, it's just a way of thinking. It makes us special. We, we think about a lot of things and it has like tangle around the round. So if you feel like you wanted to tell something that you cannot comprehend, it's easier to talk to women because women, they can actually split one by one because they have a lot of boxes that they can pull into. That's how our mind works for women. But for guys and you know, other things, they have one box, one information comes in, they provide you something. So it's individual dependence. It depends on that person who wants to share. So if you have a person, if you feel like you want to share to a guy, go ahead. If you want to share to a girl, also go ahead. There's individually preference. It, did I answer your questions? Did yeah, I kind of did. Because I don't know, because I was raised with like a lot of brothers. So I'm the only girl mm. in the family. So yeah, I don't have like, yeah, because I'm not like a very feminine sometimes. But if I reach out to guys, I'm worried if the guys think the other way, like, oh, this girl want to talk to me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Do you have a friend, a guy friend who understand, like, he's just a friend to you? Yeah, I kind of agree with you when you say individual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, yeah, like, because some guys, never, they do care. Mm-hmm. And some guys, okay, they don't care, but it's okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. But I was just curious, okay. like, you know, from your perspective. But yeah, thank you, Shaza. Yeah, uh, from my perspective, it's very individual preference. Because based yeah. on our data as well, sometimes when people come in, um, they tell that they want to talk to girls. So we're like, okay, let's get girls listening outside. Or sometimes um, people come into our platform and say, I want to talk to guys. So then we get guys listening come in. So, and we don't know who's, whether the person comes into lucky to plump one. So we just yeah. provide what they request for. Yeah, true. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And there's another question here. What, how can we respond to a person that feels dissociated? Keep saying, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. It's not your fault. Be enough. Okay. So um, there's a study about this and this go in depth and why people keep saying I'm sorry. Sometimes people young very be careful. Ataupun says a lot of stories. They have um childhood where um a childhood environment ataupun an environment that forced them to a position where they are at fault. If a person is being raised constantly in a position where or a culture oh, this happened because of you? Ataupun, for example, when a kid spill a milk, the mother akan marah, oh, why did you do this? So the blaming on the kid, this process akan buatkan orang tu rasa macam, oh, this is my fault, I'm sorry. This is happening because of me, I'm sorry. So how to help this person? Uh, you can say, um, this is not your fault, as in, this is a common way to say, it's not your fault. But another way that you can say it, Okay, this is the situation that happening. You bagi tahu balik the situation so that you can give more information to that person by telling that person, and this is what happening. It's beyond your control and it's not something that caused by you. So this kind of words. Macam, when you tell the situation, that person yang tengah blame themselves, akan macam, oh, so it's beyond my control. It's not my fault. And it, it requires a whole of story before you go straight to it's not your fault. Um, if that person keep on saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because there's a lot of people, unfortunately, Malaysian law, we have this problem where we think that it comes from us. But actually, it's not. It's the situation that's causing it. So how to tackle this? Highlight the situation. And then, yeah, Shufeng, again, another, I feel like you have background on this. So there's another, highlight the situation and bring it back to the composition. ACE stands for Adverse Childhood Experience. So each one of us has adverse childhood experience. Each one of us experience a different parenting style. But for Malaysian, uh, mostly, this is based on our findings, uh, we have um, um, 
a parenting style where usually children are blamed. So children are putting in position where we are at fault. So when we run, people would say, Jangan lari, why are you running? People would say something like that. Um, that's, yes, definitely Google for more details. You would understand how ACE difference according to each other. And ACE is definitely affecting what, why the person is saying a lot of I, I'm sorry. ACE childhood, yeah. Good. Any other questions? What should we do if we think someone gets professional help immediately, but when you suggest they actively reject it? Okay, good question. What should we do if we think someone should get professional help immediately, tapi bila you suggest dia tak nak? Okay, as a person, if you are the, the one who providing, give them the link, but don't force. Just check out, I, I think they need this help. Oh, don't use I. This is help that you can get. Uh, this is the link, and this is how to do it. Give all the sources to that person. Let the person decide. And if that person is very close to you, ask that person if you want uh, if that person want you to in companies, sometimes they're just a quote though. So they don't know what to expect from this professional. They don't know what this professional might ask. So there's fear to, to expose themselves. So if they have someone and media to them, the man jumpa this professional, ataupun the man doing the call, it's actually very helpful. Yes, and company them is definitely a great idea. Um, definitely if you're comfortable. If you're not comfortable, um, and there's another way to give it to actually provide the help. Okay, Keda has a hand up. Yes, Keda? Um, my question is actually pretty similar to um, Elaine's question. But uh, I'd like to ask, uh, how do we encourage people to reach out or seek help? Because uh, some um, are afraid or maybe they don't really have the confidence to do so due to the stigma or maybe some don't um, really come from a supportive circle or maybe family members? Okay, that's, that's good. That, that's a good question. Um, that's actually the, the main reason why I speak to us this form because we understand that people not comfortable to reach out, people are afraid to reach out. So anonymity is the key. Though. Like when you reach out to people, sometimes you don't expose yourself. You don't want to tell this information. So if you, if you notice that the person that you see in giving this all, all alarmings is the person yang tak nak expose, provide um, help yang actually pro, uh, give them anonymous punya, uh, platform. Macam either speak to us or there's actually another called Seven Cups. So all these resources yang offer anonymity actually tackles this part where people are afraid to actually reach out. And how you can do as a person um, definitely to share on our Instagram or talk about it if you see a person with alarming notes. It's actually a good practice to actually tell the person or spread out um, the information. This stigma needs to be tackled um, by actually talking about it, normalizing conversations about it and addressing within each other. You can start with small group, you can start with yourself and then it will go. Um, uh, Ima, Ima, sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Hi, no worries. Um, I do have a question, which is, I think this is very scenario based. So let's say someone who is, you know, someone who has gone through trauma or depression, they are currently facing a problem. And then now the other person approaches and say, oh, just take it as a situation, right? So is it all right to still um, be allowed to, you know, to be empathized about that particular situation or to just, or to just, you know, like not put any emotions in front, just go straight up and take it as a situation basis. What, what, what's your thought on this? Okay, so um, I'm just going to reiterate what the information that I just received from you. So this person um, who's telling the story has depression. So I have a series of um, mental illness, is that correct? And then something happened, which is the situation. So how you as a listener want to react to it. So should you address yep. the situation or you address the person's depression? So when it comes to this part, um, I think as a listener, what you can do is you ask the person, um, first address the feeling. Sorry, I think I think I can't really hear you. Oh, sorry, my mic right. Okay. Yep. 
all right so um stages there's stages for this there's a process for it first process is to evaluate the situation whether the situation is causing triggers towards her depression or his depression so about people with depression they have triggers they have things that causing them to go back to that situation to go back to their mental illness so identify if this situation is a trigger how to identify is us do you feel this way after the situation happens um is the situation making you to feel this a uh, feeling are you feeling sad because of this situation ask this kind of a uh, kind of question untuk you faham whether this situation is a trigger for her ataupun this situation trigger for him or her or whether this situation is just another on top that doesn't relate to the depression at all okay because you need to understand that first macam is it related to your depression or is this a situation if it's related to the depression then um you can access it by saying yeah which oh it's a trigger to your um mental illness so how can i help to actually assist this and go into asking questions on how you can help so about uh, different people with especially with depressions they have their own coping mechanism so tanya dia um are you okay with this um do you want to talk about it and don't address the situation address the mental illness but if that person check up oh no the situation is very hard it's not the trigger i'm i'm not feeling sad because of my depression it's just this thing yang mengganggu i and then you address the situation so that's how you separate by asking and just to highlight for everyone here this conversation is hard and requires practice but don't worry if you're in that situation um just um be mindful first take a deep breath and then analyze jangan terus reply just relax sebab so, sometimes we feel like we wanted to give instant reply to that person but we don't know what to reply just relax first access first and then you can face your sentence there okay i'm just answering the question yeah yeah thank you okay um we have two people raise up oh, we have time right kida yeah we have 10 minutes more okay so i'll take okay. this two this two question and the one in the chat so let's go with uh, fatin first Oh, I think Eileen raised her hand first before oh, me. Oh, really? Okay, yes. okay, Eileen. Okay, you can go first. No worries. <laughs> oh, um, okay then. Thank you so okay. much, Eileen. Um, I was wondering about your opinion regarding mm-hmm. to reaching out to a person or a friend. What is your opinion regarding the situation now that we are in, currently in the pandemic? We mostly we interact with uh, another person through, through the screen online. Mm-hmm. would that be any different with physical touch and or like with online and as for now the session we have is more like how we respond to it if we uh, if we have that or uh, through online but uh, would would you say there would be a slightly different or it would be very entirely different if we are there presence with that person and having to give a physical touch as compared as we only or manage to listen what they text and have a limited uh, interaction with them. Very good question. Thank you, Fatih. Okay, uh, so for this, um, just to reiterate the question again, so online and in person, in my opinion, which one is the most, um, which one, uh, how to tackle this both, how to tackle this both situation. Lah. So in my presentation, I focus on our, on online because we are in this online situation because chat, um, messages. But what if in person? Um, my opinion, person is always the best because body language matters. Your eyes, your face, your touch matters. And if we want to compare between online and physical, physical is actually, um, it's more... It pro, it's more effective rather than online because when a person feels sad if it's a person that very close and dear to you physical touch helps a lot um hug or tapping on the hand or tapping on the shoulder this comfort and actually helps it more effectively compared to online because that person feels the comfort that you're providing rather than reading the text you saying i'm here it's different uh, reading a text i'm here compared to a person tapping your shoulder 
it's the same message, but it feels different. So in terms of eff eff efficiency, in terms of effectiveness, um, based on my opinion, person in person is more effective. It's more, um, I say it doesn't take long to actually make that person to feel better compared to online. And I'm sharing online, so but that's our, hmm, that's our difficulty now to actually relate to online. Um, yeah, uh, may I have like follow up question to that? Mm -mm, sure. So what I'm trying to say is that what I'm trying to convey is knowing the fact that physical touch or physical present would be entirely make, make entirely different to another person. How mm -hmm. would uh, we effectively implement it, uh, the way we react it or response uh, to a person when we, we physically meet them uh, into online? Physically meet them into yeah, online. I do not know how to explain it. It's more like, <laughs> okay. okay, I give you some uh, example. Like mm -hmm. if we have a dear friend who lives mm -hmm. miles and miles away from us and the only contact we can make is through online. Mm -hmm. So knowing that they are, they are struggle with mental health issues, Mm -hmm. And knowing the fact that physical help, a uh, physical touch or, or physical interaction would be very helpful, but mm -hmm. we are limited in that sense. How are we ah. going to uh, implement that? Or uh, knowing that we have this kind of limitation, but we can make that as much uh, as we are like physically present in, uh, okay. with them in, through online. Okay, okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you for reiterating. Okay. So, um, how to actually practice in-person physical touch in online yes. um, environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what we're trying to ex explore now, this is still in the explosion stage, is through video call, because you can see face and you can see the person listening. Um, and we notice, and there's also research about it, when a person talking and you nodding, and you um, looking to that person talking, that person who is talking to you uh, feel more comfort, feel that you're there, feel that you're listening. So video call helps, um, FaceTime, uh, video call WhatsApp. It, it does not replace physical touch, but it gives the sense of comfort because that person can see you. That person can see how you react. That person can see you. Um, if that person is very close to you, they can actually see you cry. So, uh, in COVID, there's a lot of people losing each other or sometimes lost parents, friends that are very dear they can actually cry together. So through video call, empathy is much more easier. You can show your face, you can um, show you the emotions that you have to your body language. It's, it cannot replace physical touch, but it can feel, yes, nothing. it can send the feelings to that person. Feel that you're there, you're listening, and your body language agreeing to it. So video call helps. <laughs> and is that okay, Fatim? I'm sorry. If, yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. That's very insightful and helpful too. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah. As Sue Feng saying in the comment section, yes, agree, physical touch, erasable, but video call show active listening and visual presence really help. Yes, because you're there, your facial, your body language, it's very helpful when you talk to a person. Okay, let's go to Iyin. This is very interesting, maybe out of the topic, but um, let's say, you know, you can't tackle your mental health, <laughs> but the current, you know, uh, protecting mechanism is feeling numb or mm -hmm. no emotions at all. I just want your opinion for that, like just emotionally numbness. Emotion numbness. Um, in emotion numbness is um, actually a type of defense mechanism. Yes, you're correct. Defense mechanism that the person built um, for not being sad. So it's an internal, internal barrier, like a shield, you know, yeah, holding a shield. I don't want to feel this, so I feel numb. So um, what's the question again of feeling numb? Um, like treaters, like, you know, you can't have mental health issues, but just have numb for now. But oh, I'm pretty okay. sure you go along the way, but is it normal? Okay. Yeah, numbness, yeah. So numbness is another sign of... Um, what say is that repression suppression okay so it's a barrier it's a shield so it's a shield that holds you from feeling the emotion but then again it's similar to suppressing the emotion which i'm ignoring the emotion um, when the numbness can be temporary 
it can be my chum. Oh, I I don't want to feel this now, so I'm building a shield. Um, it can be temporary. So but it's temp okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's totally fine. So you don't have to address it now. My chum, as an individual state, contohla, you acknowledge the feeling, but you just don't want to feel it. It's fine. It's fine. Temporary. It's fine. If it's more than weeks, then maybe you have to sit down and talk about it. If not, suppression happens and it will start to consume you. Okay? I guess. Thank you. Temporary is fine. More long than sampai bulan, that's not good. Get help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's the end of the question. Thank you, guys. This is such an interactive session. Um, very good question. And we have um, very good discussion as well. I, I like the comment session. Thank you, guys. And let's have a picture session, Ken. Okay. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna stop sharing so that we can get a few view of everyone. Hey everyone.